Welcome back to the Chad AC Show News Talk KFYO. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Our next guest, Senior Director of Korean Studies for the Center for National Interest, good friend of the show, Harry Kazianis, back with us. Harry, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. How are you? Doing great. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to visit with you. And uh, uh, it, it always seems as though there's something going on in North Korea and over the weekend, we, we heard a couple, a few different reports. One that, uh, and I guess this started off maybe last Thursday, that uh, Kim Jong-un w- was dead. Uh, then he was okay. Uh, then he was in a vegetative state. Uh, then he was okay. And uh, now he might be writing letters to people. <laughs> Did I, is, is that about right? Is that kind of, does that cover a lot of the news coverage from over the weekend? I was pretty spot on, Chad. That's great. I got a job for you if your radio career is over. <laughs> I'll tell you. So, I mean, wh- what is going on in North Korea? What is Kim Jong Un missing in action? Well, you know, over the weekend, the reports were even crazier than that. I mean, there was even a report in a Japanese news outlet that said that Kim was on a tour looking at some sort of factory in North Korea, had what seemed like a heart attack, and then was brought to a hospital. And then North Korean physicians were so nervous to operate on Kim because he's so obese that he ended up having an even bigger heart attack and going into some sort of brain dead state. And then, of course, that was recirculated in the media over and over and over again. The the thing is, Chad, to be honest with you, if if I was betting on this, I would say he's probably alive, maybe had some sort of surgery, or maybe he was even hiding out from the coronavirus. I mean, we know for a fact that North Korea is suffering from COVID-19. We don't know the extent of it, but we do know that pictures keep leaking out of Pyongyang over and over again with people wearing all sorts of face masks and looks like the United States and everywhere else. So I, I think at best, I think he's alive. I think by now, now, if he was really dead, I think we'd have some sort of indication. I mean, the North Koreans can keep secrets, but I don't know if they'd be able to keep this for that long. The other indicator I point to is South Korean leadership has been very, very vocal that he is alive. In fact, their top national security advisor, Moon chung in said very specifically that he is alive and doing well. So hmm. it'd be hard for me to think that they would go that far on a limb if he wasn't. Well, if uh, and I guess this is not the first time that he's gone, quote unquote, missing, correct? Oh, yeah. Back in 2014, he went missing for about six weeks. We, we went through the same song and dance all over. Everybody's speculating, trying to figure out what's going on. There's all sorts of wild news reports. Then he just struts out with a cane, and apparently he had some sort of foot surgery. And all went as well as, as, as could be after that. So. You know, I I think it is worrying, though, because the the trend lines are, I mean, look, this man's 36, 37 years old. He's five foot seven. Maybe that's generous because he wears lifts most of the time when he's in public. And he weighs 300 pounds. That means his body mass index is 45. I mean, he's a big boy, and he's got all sorts of cardiovascular issues. He's got a drinking problem. We know he likes to smoke a lot of times near missile tests, which is not a good idea. So, look, he, he's got some health issues, and I think it's a stuff that we have to take very seriously. Who is uh, next in command? Like, l- let's just say uh, Kim, jo- Kim Jong-un is either dead now or dies in the future. Who's next up? Well, next up, I think I, I think there's a strong argument to be made that Kim Yo Jung, his sister, would be next in line. Uh, she's a little bit younger. She's 31 years old. Uh, you've seen her in different pictures over the last few years, but you might not know it. When Mike Pence was on the watching the, the Olympics in, in a couple of years back, there's a lot of uh, innuendo and speculation about maybe she would talk to Mike Pence because they were seated right up top watching all of the Olympics, but neither talked to one another. That was her big introduction. Her claim to fame is that she has a lot of power within North Korea trying to beat U.S. sanctions. She is at one of the top officials that has a lot of expertise on that. And it doesn't take a genius, Chad, to figure out is the one that who controls the money usually controls the power. So for me, I, I think the simplest way to look at it is if she's the one who controls the bucks, she's the one who'd be in power. Is there, you know, let's say she gets into power, how how evil is she uh, compared to, I mean, her, her family that, that has uh, been in power in North Korea? 
Well, you know what? Nobody knows, but there is one telltale sign that I find very interesting. She has been the, the primary person responsible for softening Kim Jong-un's image, which, let me tell you, that's a pretty hard thing to do when you're responsible for the death of, of hundreds of thousands of people and starving your own people in concentration camps. But she's Didn't the he one kill his own uncle or have him killed? Just, Killed his own uncle, killed his, killed his brother in Kuala Lumpur import with VX gas. But she has been the one tasked with trying to, to soften that image up, to have, you know, to make him look more photogenic. In fact, there's a lot of speculation that she was the one, when he was in Singapore, made him sort of walk among the people and, and, and take selfies with people, which is crazy for a North Korean leader. So that might signal that she might be a little bit more of a modernist approach. She might be a slightly more open to talking with the West. But the thing is, the North Koreans are never giving up their nuclear weapons. So she could try to soften her image or soften him as, his image as much as possible. But I don't think the fundamentals are going to change, to be quite frank with you. Yeah, visiting with uh, Harry Kazianis here on the Chad HT Show. Uh, if uh, it, it, if these reports do come out, ev- you know, ever, uh, that uh, Kim Jong-un has passed away, uh, what would be the reason to hide it uh, for so long? Consolidation of power. I mean, the thing is, in North Korea, information is power in a closed society like that. So let's say he did die suddenly and, and Kim Yo-jong was there. The smart thing for her to do would be to take anybody who's a witness, essentially lock them up and, and make sure that they cannot get that information out. And then she would need to, be, to do two things. Consolidate political control, make sure she has the military behind her. But the most important thing of all, Chad, is she needs to make sure that she has control of those nuclear weapons. Because whoever controls the nuclear weapons and also all the chemical and biological weapons North Korea has, that person will be in the most dominant position. Because that is what everybody fears of North Korea. So I, I think for her, if she's able to get the political and the nukes under her control, I think she releases the information and we start watching the funeral processions in Pyongyang. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do you, do you think there's any type of uh, – is there any kind of holiday or anything coming up where uh, you would anticipate seeing Kim Jong-un? Nothing just yet, to be honest with you. But I, I have a feeling that the, the most likely scenario here is, is – like I said, he's either hiding because of, of maybe coronavirus or maybe some type of surgery that he might have had and is, is recovering. I mean, the, the indicators right now is, is something happened, but I don't think is dire of him passing away. I mean, something like that eventually would leak out. But again, if, if she's trying to consolidate power and she's smart, she locked everybody away, you know, this would be the way to do it. But I'll be honest, even when, when Kim's father died, we didn't know anything for, for two days until he passed away. So this is North Korea. And the enigma continues to roll on. Yeah. My, my, I got to admit, the fa- my favorite source over the weekend, Harry, uh, that Kim Jong-un was dead was when TMZ reported it. <laughs> well, wait, well, if, they, if they've got sources inside North Korea, that's pretty good. That's that's a little scary, but then again, they're the ones who make all the Kardashian rumors. So I don't right? Know how yeah, that's true. Believe them, so. That's a good point. Hey, that's hey my thinking. Harry, appreciate your time as always. Uh, we'll visit with you again soon, I'm sure. Thank you, sir. That's Harry Kazianis. He's senior director of Korean studies uh, for the Center for National Interest. You can follow him uh, on Twitter as well. We'll go ahead. We'll take our break when we come back. Your phone calls, your text messages, and more. Chad Easty Show KFYO.